All right, I have a question here from Melissa to everyone. Is there a chance you can go in to collect your files um, if you lost your thumb drive? No one is allowed on campus this week, uh, probably not until April. Uh, that includes me. But if you go to Photo Bucket, you can download the files that you have uploaded so far into the class. And those will be good to work with. So I recommend you, you definitely do that. They are uh, compressed files, they're JPEG files, but both your exercises and your assignments, because these are what you're going to choose from. So if we look at like the collage creature assignment, these are what you're going to choose from for the midterm critique. So just to show you quickly how to download from Photobucket, you go to your work, you click download, and then it will go to whatever your, your native computer is that you're working on. And then what we'll do is we'll open that up, that file up, it's gonna to go to my downloads folder, right? We will open that up in photo P and turn it into a, uh, a Photoshop file that we can resize without it distorting at all. So though we can't, at this point, though all of your files are safe on the computers in the lab, but we can't go back into the, the physical lab at this point, we still have access to all of the work that we have uploaded. And so I recommend you guys all download that. Okay, moving on from there. Hope I should keep that chat open. Still learning. But yeah, thank you for these questions. They they help they help everyone. All right. So working with the basic shape tools, remember once you've set the parameters for a shape, like we created an outline for this uh, rounded rectangle, then if you right click and duplicate, you don't need to set those parameters again. And you can use the, the, the grid and the guidelines to keep everything in place. So what you'll notice is so far, if I turn my, uh, my background image off, I have very clean vector shapes. The problem is I don't have a whole lot of control of them. I'm not able to curve them. I'm not able to adjust them individually. So we need to go to another tool to get more options than just these. And that tool, that's still going to give us a lot of a clear clear uh, sharp vectors that don't just look really wonky, is this next tool down. It's called the pen tool. This is the one I recommend you do a lesson on. And if I just show it to you really quickly, it's a lesson in making paths using the pen tool. So this is an interactive lesson. I'm just going to go through it really quickly. So when we use the clean, ah. <laughs> when we use the pen tool, you actually click what are called anchor points. And if you just click and move without holding down at all, it will always connect the anchors with straight lines until you've completed a path, right? Once you have drawn one, then you can double click it and you can see the anchor points on that path. And then you can individually change them and move and alter them just by clicking on the anchor points. You can also extend and continue a drawing by clicking on the anchor point and then um, drawing out from it. 
So it's, it's really helpful to do this on your own to see how that works. But if we want to drag any anchor to a new position, we can. And this is how we can do the equivalent of free transforming. But we have to double click in order to see them. And then we can also add new anchors in if we want to create new shapes. So now if we want to uh, alter not just one shape or one uh, anchor, but multiples, we can hold down shift to do multiples like that. And then we can alter multiple points at once. We can also delete anchors just by selecting it and hitting delete. So double clicking the path lets you edit each point. And then double clicking a point will change it from being straight on both ends to being curved on both ends. Now this is the key to the pen tool. To get a curve, you have these handles. These are called Bezier handles. And you alter the angle of the handle to change the curve. Now if you want to change a curve, to a straight, you can also do that. So we want to change these straights to a curve. We've done that. We're going to hold shift while editing the curve. And now we can change each side independent of the other side. So you see how this one I'm changing, but the other side is staying the same. That's because I'm holding shift. If I'm not holding shift, then they'll both move the same amount. So I'll, I'll do one without holding shift. Oop, i got to change it to a curve. You see how they both move. But if I hold down shift, then I can change one side independent of the other. And then if I hold down the option, the Alt Option key, I can actually change not just the length of the curve, but the angle of it independently and create very different shapes. Click and drag inner control to change the straight points corner radius. So this is for curves. You'll see you have a secondary point here. This is to show how much of that curve you want. These are kind of automatic rounded shapes like the rounded rectangles. And if you hold shift while doing that, it will edit multiple. Okay. So that's kind of how the lessons are. They'll give you kind of interactive ways to go back. But I want to go back to my project now because you're really gonna learn the pen tool when you have to use it for your own project, right? So if I use the pen tool now, and let's lock everything except for this latest one. If I double click on it, you would think it would let me select it, but it doesn't. The pen tool will create a brand new path. So that's the problem with these shape tools, is they're a little tricky to alter, but there is a way to do it. And so to, to edit a shape tool, you wanna hold down shift and click on it. So I'll show you that again. So let me delete this path. I'm just command z back to before I created it. Okay. And now if I hold down shift and click, I can edit that shape tool. But if I use the pen tool, 
it's going to create a new path. So there isn't an easy way to simply um, transform it. So I have a question here. How do you import your sketch to the vector program? That's what's nice. You just want to create a new file within vector.com, and then you just drag and drop your JPEG. So I could bring this one in this time. You just drag and drop it in, and then you can size it, fit it the way you want. So if I use this one, which I might because I like it, <laughs> as my spot illustration for assignment 7, you see how difficult this would be to make as vector shapes. So this doesn't work as a great logo, but it could be a really good spot illustration. Good line art. But you just drag and drop it in. Okay, so you drag and drop it in, and it's there. And then, once you've brought it in, remember, scroll down and take its opacity down, and then turn on the grid before you start, you know, building it up with shapes. And for for shapes like circles, squares. If you want them to lock as a perfect circle or square, you just hold down shift, just like when we were uh, doing exercise two in Photoshop. Okay, so back to this one. I like this chat function, it's helpful. So how can I do more complicated shapes like this fish head? There's no predetermined shape, vector shape already in the program that works for that fish head really well. But there is a triangle, right? But it's it's not the same. So I'm going to try to draw this with the pen tool. And so what I'm gonna do is kind of zoom up to it. Oops, there we go, zoom into it. Um, one way to navigate when you're zoomed in is to hold down space bar. Oops. And then you should be able to click and drag. And that's the same as in Photoshop or Illustrator. Okay, so now I'm on the pen tool. And as soon as I click somewhere, I'm going to go ahead and use the grid. It's going to start a new path. And I'm going to start it just with straights. So I'm going to actually start it as a triangle. It's an easy way to get it to line up. And I'm using that grid. Then I'm closing it. Now, just like we learned in that, that tutorial, if I double click here with the pen tool, whoops, undo made a new path. I don't want that. If I double click, come on, there we go. It gives me the path. And then if I double click on the actual anchor, it will round it for me. And then if I don't hold down shift, it will equalize on both sides like so and give me a curve. I don't want it quite that curved. I want to keep it flat, right? Same thing here. If I double click, it will turn it into a curve. That works pretty well. And then I think I think I need the pen tool, and I think I need to add an anchor point. So let's try double clicking again, and then just adding it in. There we go. And that allows me, I'm going to add one in over here as well. Remember, you have to double click first, but then that allows me to pull it out. Because I'm going for symmetry, I'm doing it the same on both sides. 